Okay, hi everybody. This is uh, Linda and Connie. We're back here again with you for our Friday chat. And uh, today we're talking about something that I love to talk about, and that is how your home affects you. And uh, we both have a, a lot to say about that, Connie particularly from the organizing and decluttering perspective, but also the energy perspective. Of course, I'm all about the energy perspective. So should be an interesting conversation today. So hi, Connie, how are you? Hi, Linda. I'm good. How are you? Yes. I, yeah, really good. Really good. Thank you. Yeah. So how our homes affect us? Well, sometimes people are surprised when we talk about something like this, because a lot of people think of their home as just, well, it's just where I sleep and I eat. And, you know, it's just the place where I live. So they think of it as a, you know, just a place. But it is so much more than that. Um, I was you know, tell people your home is either supporting you or it can be sabotaging you. And um, it's yeah. important to know <laughs> which, of, which of those it is. Um, because your home is really a reflection of you and everything that's going on with you. And um, that's visible to see. Um, it, it tells you a lot about what's going on in your life. And so if you want to change something in your life, you can work with your home to help you do that. And if you do start making some changes in your life, then you'll probably be inspired to make changes in your home anyway. So the two really go hand in hand. And so that's certainly something that you deal with, Connie, when you're dealing with organizing, right? Yes. And, and I always tell the story like people always ask me so how did you get into decluttering how why, why would you start doing this and I actually started when I was a teenager I don't know whether I ever told you that story Linda yeah. but um I I was lucky enough to have my own room growing up as of six years old but it was very small room like I jokingly say it was a broom closet it was really <laughs> very very small room Basically, there was a bed in it, a small desk and a wardrobe, and that was all that fitted in there. And but I always had I felt it from early on that our environment has an effect on us. So I would try to reorganize it, like trying to figure out if I put the bed here, if I put the bed here, how, how does it feel? How does it work better? How does it flow better? Can I do my homework from school better here or should I put the desk over here? And like, mind you, there was really not that many options because the room was so small. And then I started to figure out, okay, these are the two or three options I'm stuck with. So how else can I make some changes? And this is kind of how I, like, I couldn't do this as a profession back then. There was no like declutter coach or mm -hmm. um, professional organizer really at least not where I grew up, but I took this into my business world. I worked in finance and I always made sure like, how does my desk support me? How does my desk support me or my office support me and what I need to do? So, uh, and, and I always say like, we can all feel that. You don't need to be extra sensitive, although <laughs> most of my clients are highly sensitive or extra sensitive or, or um, but you can feel that whether um, like if you get stressed out or frustrated a lot on your in, in your home or in your office, you know, something isn't aligned, how I call it. So, right. Yeah. Well, and, you know, when I worked as a, I worked for many years as a feng shui practitioner and um, you could always tell, you know, I could always tell even before I went to see someone in their home or in their office just from what they told me, you know, so if somebody told me, mom, my life is just so chaotic, I don't feel very grounded, I just feel I'm here, there and everywhere. Well, I already knew from from that what I was going to find when I arrived at the home, chances are I would find at least one area, possibly more, um, that were just in chaos. Very often it's the garage, very often it's a basement, closets, cupboards, drawers, um, Sometimes it's the whole house. Sometimes it's just one area. But inevitably, that's what I would find. And it, it would be the same in, you know, if they said, oh, well, yeah, life is fine. But my career, my job or my, you know, I'm really struggling in that. Then I knew that I would probably find that their office was chaotic or their workspace uh, or it just didn't reflect who they were. You know, and I, often I would work with, with finance people. and. Um, 
sometimes I would go and you walk into the office and it's just stuff everywhere. Yeah. And I would ask them, you know, okay, so if you came to consult with somebody, mm -hmm. and you saw them sitting behind this desk with all of this stuff, would you feel that your stuff was a priority? Or would you feel it's going to get lost in there somewhere? How much confidence would you have in, in that person's ability to be able to help you and make you a priority? So really, the environment, what's showing up is a reflection of kind of your state of mind. Yeah. And so if you bring order to that, then you're bringing order to that chaos, chaotic thinking or whatever's going on inside of you. Uh, that's why I say the two really go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and again, as you mentioned, being sensitive, but highly sensitive people typically tend to be impacted. We're all impacted by our environment. But if you are highly sensitive and or an empath, you will be impacted by it a lot more than most people. Um, mm -hmm. Many people say they just, you know, they, they, they can't stand any kind of clutter or disorganization. Um, it, they, they do feel it physically. And again, you know, this is not to say that you have to be a neat freak and everything has to be 100% organized, but it's, it, you know, you can just look around you and ask yourself, what is this reflecting back to me? You yeah. know, if somebody's having problems with money, I would go and look at the area of their home that represented finances and abundance. And if if it's the if an area full of trash, well, there you are. That's what's that's mm -hmm. what's affecting your ability to have a healthy financial situation. So they really do go hand in hand. Yeah, and I want to add something to it because you mentioned um, closets and basements and garages mm -hmm. and everything. And a lot of people are surprised when they hear that, even though everything looks nice but if behind the closet door or downstairs in the basement or upstairs in the attic is a huge mess they're surprised yeah. that that should have an effect on them but of course it does because everything yeah. that we own is somehow connected to us now so right. that i mean it may it may be be better it it might be a progress already if like mm -hmm. the environment you're in is nice and organized but it's like the unconscious if you just shove it somewhere and try right. to forget about it it is eventually yeah. it will come up and and i mean yeah. I've, I've i don't want to um talk bad about my mother but she was for example somebody like this like when you came into our home where i grew up it was everything was always very very nicely presentable and all that but don't dare to open a closet or, <laughs> or a cupboard right. because everything would be coming coming down it was just right. shoved in there somehow and um yeah so that has an effect on us too yeah you know? it does and and you're right you know things that are hidden away just because you can't see them does not mean they are not affecting you they are yeah. um yeah. in fact it's it, it's really representing things that you don't want to look at things you're putting off yeah and yeah. um i remember <laughs> years ago when I was working as a feng shui practitioner I went to this one house and the couple who lived there were having a lot of health challenges and they'd been having health challenges for many years and mm. had not been able to get any clarity around them nothing never nothing ever seemed to work and I was quite um bewildered you know as I was walking around the home because it was incredibly neat and it was nicely decorated and I was really having a hard time finding anything wrong, to be honest. And um, I thought, well, maybe this is a case where, you know, <laughs> it's just not, I, it, it was it was really perplexing to me. And so then I asked them, you know, I said, oh, do, you know, do you have a basement in this house? Yes. It took me to the basement. It was floor to ceiling. Mm -hmm. There was just a little pathway, you know, through the basement. So they're living on top of all of this chaos, yeah. all of this stuck energy. And uh, I said, do you have anything stored anywhere else? Well, yes, in the attic. So we went and looked in the attic. Again, it was the same thing, just jam packed with stuff. So they're living sandwiched between, they've got all this energy above them and they've got stagnant energy below them. Bingo, that, there it is. You know, yeah. So no wonder their health was being affected. Of course it was, because yeah. they're just surrounded by stagnant energy. And people will often say, oh, but uh, yeah, yes, I have stuff, but it's in a storage facility. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't care if it's in another country. If it's your stuff, it yeah. is still affecting you. Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, I don't know, maybe it's even a little 
So people think if it's further away in the storage um, facility, it may not affect them as much, but I would maybe argue it maybe is even more strenuous on you because it's like, the, the, yes, it's far away, but but your unconscious is still kind of checking in on this constantly, you mm. know, and then it's, it's even further away. So, right. yeah, it's very interesting. Um, and, and again, I, I'm totally not a neat freak. Um, mm. If you come to my house, it's not like um, I'm, I'm living not in a showroom like <laughs> home or anything at all. And I also like sometimes, and I, I also don't want to talk bad about professional organizers, but sometimes they're taking it for my um, for my perspective almost too far if we're looking at a pantry and the pantry is really nice like it's not a chaos it's just like a pantry looks and then we're starting to label everything and everything has to be put by right back there and labeled and like soldiers in, in and everything that is also not what I'm standing for mm -hmm. um, it may look really nice but then all these showroom type homes that we see in magazines look very nice they're just possibly not very feasible to live in because well, we're so how realistic in, is it you know to, yeah to it's not realistic that. exactly mm. and just because you have a lot of things labeled doesn't mean you're gonna stay organized or you are are gonna be organized so um so i i feel it's like again more to what in the beginning what we were saying is does your home or your surroundings support you or sabotage you that mm. is more the question it's not so much um how well presented it is and no. all that you know no. yeah well imagine you know for a moment if you've had a really tough hard day at work uh, that was overwhelming and then you come home and you can't get your car in the garage but you have to walk through the garage to get into let's say into your kitchen and there's just stuff jam-packed everywhere in the garage and i see a lot of those garages around. all right stuff jam-packed in there and you walk through that and perhaps you come into the kitchen and there's dirty dishes in the sink and there's disorganization all over the kitchen or maybe a pile of laundry to be done. How do you think that's going to, do you think that's going to make you feel better when you come home? Or do you think that's going to add to this feeling of overwhelm and chaos and just yeah. not feeling very good, to be honest? Whereas if you arrive home, you can get your car in the garage, you walk into a nice clean kitchen everything's put away um you immediately start to feel better yeah. right so there there your home is supporting you it's your it should be really your sanctuary you you know when you come yeah. home you want to feel this sense of ah I'm home you know this sense of groundedness and peace and that's mm -hmm. when it's supporting you when you come mm -hmm. home and you're just faced with things you don't like or things you don't love or chaos disorganization yeah. that is not supporting you so yeah. it's a good question to ask yourself and what happens often then um what i what i see and what the scientists also could already make links to it too is like when you come home in, into a home like this that is then so stressful in addition to your stressful day then you most likely are not you don't have enough energy left to eat healthy or to prepare a healthy meal. So you maybe just grab something real quick because you're so drained energetically and stressed out that you mm. don't feel like- um, You don't take care of yourself. Take care of yourself properly. And this is where the correlation is be oftentimes between clutter and unhealthy eating mm -hmm. or clutter and also weight problems. And not, I'm not saying all weight problems, but mm. they're there can be a correlation or when your countertops are so filled with with stuff that you don't have room for example to prepare a, a, a meal of course after a busy day you're gonna just say oh i just put something in a microwave you know right. and, um, right. instead of actually even with the best intentions and you're thinking like no i come home and i eat something healthy but then you come into an environment like this and your energy drops right away oh, and, yeah. and then it has this ripple effect Mm -hmm. that that goes into other areas of your life or you might be short with your spouse or you might be short with your children because the home stresses you out even more so it right. it has a lot of um additional effects that we can't yeah. forget about it has a ripple effect it, it affects everybody around around you it affects how well you do your work it affects um how you feel about your work it affects your progress at work it affects every aspect of your life. It affects your relationships. Um, 
you know, as well as the, the issue, you know, as we're talking about taking care of yourself, one of the things I always found was that let's say somebody moves into a new house, new to them anyway, um, and their first priority usually is to make the house look nice in the areas where people will see it. And so usually uh, the person's bedroom, for example, will be the last room they take care of. Now, I always tell people to take care of the, their bedroom first before they do any other area. And that is because your bedroom is the room, it's really closest to you. It has the biggest impact on you. You spend more time there than, than anything else. It can affect your sleep. It can affect your health. If you have a lot of things stored under the bed, for example, um, if you have clutter, you know, think about what is the last thing you see at night before you go to sleep? And what's the yeah. first thing you see in the morning yeah. when you wake up? Because if that's a really cluttered room or full of things you don't like, um, or for a lot of people, it will be uh, like a, a piece of exercise equipment that, that has become a place to hang clothes on you know, <laughs> that's never used or something like that. Um, then that's a constant reminder of something you're not doing. And then there's yeah. guilt and shame that are associated with that. It's, it can really have a major, major impact. We don't necessarily think of it in that way, but if you start to see things energetically, then you start to realize the impact that they have. And yeah. then when you really get that, then you want to do something about it. That's what sort of inspires you to be able to, to do something and maintain it uh, because it's, it's self-care. You always say that, you know. Yeah, you know, well, yeah I say decluttering is self-love. And, and you, <laughs> you're saying like when they're moving to a new home. But I noticed that a lot of times when I go and help people with clutter well before the pandemic and actually really walked into people's homes, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time the bedroom is really like like the, you come in and you think oh it's not even that bad here and then you're like the bedroom is the worst and some people had it so bad that they could barely climb into their bed because mm -hmm. their bed was piled full mm -hmm. and um yeah or or having exercise equipment in the bedroom i also find like counterproductive because i'm like you want to try and relax in here and then yes. you look at this this um exercise bike or or whatever you have in there and and i don't know that pulls on you unconsciously so um how how can you expect your body to actually really sleep well and rest well and then you wake up the next morning rested when when you kind of see this exercise bike whether you're using it or not i would even argue you know mm, right and, um, yeah it's true i mean so, it, the, your bedroom you really want for rest and relaxation it's not it should not be a place of of activity like an exercise bike or you know something like that it's or even a, a desk and yeah, i know yeah. sometimes you don't have space and sometimes you have a small apartment or something in, and maybe the only place you can put a desk is in your bedroom but then i would at least make sure that it's cleared at night before you go to sleep you know maybe even screen it from view from yeah. the bed or something like that um, there are always ways to do that, but um, yeah, it, it just just think about that for a minute and look around you and ask yourself that question. You know, how is this affecting me? And yeah. you'd be surprised. Not only clutter and disorganization, but in terms of the things you have and what they mean to you, what they represent to you, mm -hmm. their history, if you like. Um, you know, what is the energy attachment and the emotional attachment? To the things that you have around because if you have a lot of times i would work with with people who were divorced and they would have uh the furniture from their marriage oh i got the furniture i made sure i got the furniture uh, in the bedroom you know and i was like you know, I, you'd be better if you you got rid of that um because it has the energy of that relationship now if you had a very amicable divorce and it was all very friendly and nice not too bad but if it, in most cases, it's not, it's very, yeah. you know, there's a lot of anger and sadness and upset there. And you're just hanging on to that energy, which makes it very difficult to, to move forward. So that would not be supporting you either. So it's not just, it might be very organized, but it's like, what does it mean to you? How does it affect you emotionally, energetically? So those yeah. are important things to consider too. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I feel like we all feel it. It's not something woo-woo. And, and that's why I'm always so happy when science starts to discover mm -hmm. and, and actually then we get the approval stamp on it, even though um, a lot of us, we wouldn't need this approval stamp no. if we would just trust 
our own feelings and when how we feel or what we what we feel when we are mm. in certain situations you know but yeah. um in our world still that stamp of approval from science means a lot and um but it is also interesting like uh, i only i don't only see it like in this light i also see it in the light that it's so interesting that you even can scientifically prove now th these connections and correlations so Mm -hmm. um yeah uh, yeah well i always um I used to talk a lot to realtors i think i've mentioned this before and you know if somebody in a in an occupation where they have to go into people's homes a lot they get this right away because they yeah. they feel it they may not always know what they're feeling or picking up on but you can tell immediately if you walk into a home that's well cared for and that is supporting the people who live there you know that that house would be a joy and to sell and, and be easy to, to list and sell mm -hmm. whereas you walk into a home that's where there's a lot of anger and sadness and chaos that's a lot more difficult and you, and you can pick up on that right away so we all feel it yeah. you just may not be aware of what we're feeling um or what it you know what it represents yeah but i think if you feel it you can you don't even need us, Linda, me, or anybody no. for that matter to tell you what it means. You can no. just figure it out for yourself what it means. People do you know, feel good or you do yeah. not feel good? Okay, people so it's know. not like you need us. <laughs> no, but the, you know, people are often just in, well, sometimes in denial about it. You know, yeah. it's like if my life is chaotic and my home is chaotic, is there a correlation there? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. If my desk is is a, a complete mess and I'm struggling in my job, is there a correlation there? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, one of the questions I would like to ask people is, okay, what do you love most about your home, and what do you like least about your home? And that tells me a lot about uh, about where they are in their life and what's going yeah. on for them right there. So yeah. it's it's just a just think of it as a direct connection. It's not something that is separate from you. Um, it is something that is absolutely impacting you all the time yeah. and um, just start looking at it in that way and and then ask yourself okay then if it's affecting me that much what what do I need to change what could I change um, yeah yeah, yeah. I always say like the first layer uh, within us is our skin and we're taking usually scare uh, good care of our skin um, we shower we make sure we're clean and everything then the second layer is the clothes and the third layer is literally like where you live your mm -hmm. your home your surroundings mm -hmm. and um yeah it it tells it says a lot about also how you think about yourself when we're sometimes looking how people are living um what what they think about themselves, whether they feel yes. worthy enough to live in an environment that is actually supporting them, or whether they feel like they're not worthy enough of a, a decent mm. surroundings. Um, right. Or, well, yeah. and I've had just to give you an example. I've, I've worked with people, for example, who were uh, maybe gone into a divorce situation, but let's say they're living in an apartment, but they know this apartment is only temporary until they find a house, um, and often what would happen is I would find that this temporary thing, which was only supposed to be for about six months a year at the most, they've been there five years already, you know, they mm -hmm. haven't been able to move on. And then when I go there, what do I find that they haven't unpacked things, things are all still yeah. in boxes, because they're coming at it with the energy of, well, this is only going to be temporary, I'm not going to be here for long. So why bother unpacking everything? Mm -hmm. And I would always say to them, unpack it up make it nice make it yeah, a place right. where you feel really good now and that will then help you mm -hmm. to get to a place where you can be able to get the house that you want it yeah. may seem you know counterproductive but if you plan on being there six months and you've been there five years you know <laughs> something's not right it, yeah don't keep things in boxes make the most of the space that you have make it work for you now even if you feel it's only going to be temporary and it will help you move forward. Yeah. And then of course, Connie comes in and says, if you can have something in a box for five years and not needing and you not really using it, it, then why the heck is it even <laughs> in right. your life? You know, uh -huh. it's like, seriously. Absolutely. That's, <laughs> you know? that's very true. That's very true. Yeah. But yeah. people, you know, they often tend to put life on hold. Yeah. 
you know, because something else is going to happen um, and then that thing doesn't happen when they expect it to and their life is still on hold and they stay stuck in that, that pattern. And it also, it doesn't mean that you have to have a huge home or a fancy home. You know, like you said, right at the beginning, you, you had a very small room and you did the best that you could with that room. So you work with the space that you have. You just don't try and cram it full of, you know, things yeah. that... Um, just going to mean that you take up all the space and all the energy and um that that's no good either you work with the space that you have and you make that space work for you mm, exactly yeah so it's a good question to ask yourself how is my home affecting me just start looking around at the things you have and um then ask yourself you know what could i change yeah. not in a stressful you know way but just be, be honest <laughs> It, it little takes, baby steps few yeah. minutes a day <laughs> baby steps yes and get help if you need to you know if, if it's very overwhelming but um there is so much you can do and it doesn't have to be um that hard mm. yeah, in fact yeah. we're going to be doing a whole series of master classes on these yeah. very topics so um yeah. if you're if you're watching this and you want to look out for that because our first one's going to be secrets to overcoming uh, clutter and overwhelm so yeah a good one and That's we will be talking even more in depth about mm -hmm. what we just talked about i'm so, yeah. giving you specific things to do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. anyway once again okay. always good to talk to you thank you yeah we could always talk for much longer but oh, yeah we... <laughs> on the rest of the day <laughs> but, yeah uh, okay. yeah a good topic so everybody start looking at your home and asking yourself how is this affecting me and uh, yeah how is it supporting me? How is it sabotaging me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I will see you next week. Thank yeah. you. Connie. Take care. Have a wonderful everybody. weekend, everyone. Yes. Bye. Right. Bye.